Hello everyone, welcome back to MLS Moves. Please make sure you like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Once we hit 5,000 subscribers, we'll be celebrating with a special jersey giveaway. Two lucky subscribers will have the chance to win a jersey of their choosing. Whether you're a diehard fan or you're just joining the fun, well, the U.S. men's national team was able to get a 2-0 victory over Bolivia in their debut match in Copa America 2024. Now, even though they were able to win this match, they still left a lot to be desired. And after this game, I honestly would say I have more frustrations than um, uh, questions answered about this team just because of how inconsistent they are as a club or as a national team. Um, First off, Pulisic started the game off with an absolute banger, and that kind of set the tone of, okay, we're not going to be uh, slow walking this match. We're going to actually try to hit him in the mouth early on in, in the game, and we're not going to wait to the game to come to us. Things were looking very good, but things kind of fizzled out early on, and, and not a lot happened in the first half. And while most players on the team, I would say, played – decent or average right i don't really think anybody had a bad match there are some things if i'm nitpicking could have been a little better uh the first thing is center back now tim ream and chris richards had a solid game i can't say that they were bad they obviously didn't concede a goal in this match but if i'm nitpicking one of the things that has to be a little better is the passing and the uh not giving the ball away as much but between chris richards and and tim ream there was a couple passes that were uh, pretty bad, honestly, could have been a little better. And they just cannot afford to do those type of uh, giveaways when we're playing better clubs. I mean, Bolivia isn't really a good team. And if you're playing Brazil, if you're playing Argentina, if you're playing Colombia, if you give those balls away, you're going to get you're gonna get smoked. You're not going to win. You're going to get the doors blown off of you. So this is a game where you're just kind of like, you want to see some more uh, dominance. You want to see a little bit more uh, preciseness. That's the kind of stuff you can't have happen. And so this is almost like a third warm-up game, if you would say. Uh, obviously, the first two, the Brazil and the uh, game against Colombia. This game, Bolivia is just not a good team, right? Bolivia is not a good team. And they're one of the lower-ranked teams in uh, this whole entire tournament. This is a team you should be beating 5-0 or 6-0. And honestly, it could have been like that, but, uh, you know, they're just, they weren't able to finish their opportunities, but to get back to center back, Tim Ream is going to be 37 years old this year. He'll be 39 by the 2026 world cup. This is the type of game where you take a chance and kind of play around with a few things like maybe give, uh, Cameron Carter Vickers a start at center back or maybe play Miles Robinson at center back. Now, I know you're going to say Miles Robinson doesn't deserve to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that this is a match where you could experiment a little bit and kind of see what might work. Now, you probably should have done that Colombia and Brazil game, but those are two pretty brutal games, right? That's who we're, if we advance to or beyond the group stage, we're going to play either one of those teams in, in, the, in the knockout stage. So this, this is the... Easiest game we played in the last three matches. This is the game where you would want to experiment with and try a couple things out. I would have liked to see Cameron Carter Vickers or um, Miles Robinson get a chance maybe to play in this match. Now, like I said, Miles Robinson, I understand if you don't want to see him play, but at least Cameron Carter Vickers, Tim Ream is 37 years old. We need to be thinking about the future. And I think the fullbacks were good. Joe Scally was very solid as he was in the last two matches as well. And um, Anthony Robinson was, uh, you know, Jedi was arguably the best player uh, for the U.S. men's national team in this game. Down the flank, he was creating chances. He was a speedster. I mean, Bolivia didn't really do anything all game uh, in general uh, as far as creating chances, but you can't really complain about what Anthony Robinson had done in this match. He looked very good and is arguably the best player of this game for the U.S. men's national team. Now, Christian Pulisic obviously had a goal and an assist, but there were times I felt like he disappeared a little bit. I'm not saying he was bad, and obviously he was the best player. That is the other player you would say is probably the best player on the pitch today, but there were times where he was unnoticeable, where he kind of drifted off. 
and like kind of looked disinterested in what was going on. And I think that if he could give it 100% like he did when you saw the goal he scored and you see the assist he set up for Ballo, that's what we need. We need him to carry this team if we want to have any chance of beating a Colombia or Brazil in the knockout stage. If we're able to advance out of our group stage, which after today looks like is going to happen, right? Now, I don't know if we're going to beat Uruguay for the group stage, but we at least will advance outside of the group stage. And I like, I just want to see Pulisic do a little bit, a little bit more. I'm not nitpicking, or I am nitpicking a little bit and, and, uh, not saying he had a bad game. I just like to see a little bit more. Now, Gio Reyna, I thought had a solid game. I don't think he was bad, like maybe some others have said he was. Um, I think he did a, uh, had a create a couple good chances early on. He kind of was playing a little bit out of position, was playing a little deeper, and the game was kind of chippy at first, right? I mean, they were they were fouling him left and right. So I think he was maybe playing a little hobbled early in the game, but I thought he was pretty solid overall. I think Tyler Adams was very solid overall. Um, you know, Ballo had a pretty suspect first uh, 30 minutes or, or before he scored the, his first goal, uh, which we need him to contribute. We have to have a striker score goals or this team is not going to go anywhere. You can't just rely on Christian Pulisic and Gio Reyna and, and Timothy Wea to score goals. The striker has got to contribute and find the back of the net. Ballo finds his first goal in the last three games. And I think this is the first time he scored since last year. We need more goals scored by our strikers. It's essential to win big tournaments like Copa America or compete in tournaments like Copa America. And Pepe came on in the second half, and he eh, he had several opportunities. Dude could have honestly had a hat trick in the second half if he was able to finish some of his chances. A couple of were his fault. A couple of them were his fault. A couple of them were just bad luck. He might be cursed. I don't know. The Lukaku curse is in full swing. It might be uh, capturing other people and, and bringing bad luck to them as well. Uh, not not 100% certain yet, but he's not officially under the, the Lukaku curse yet, but it's not looking good for him uh, as of right now. So that's to be determined. But overall, if I had to give a letter grade for this performance, I'd probably give it a C plus because it wasn't bad but it wasn't great. We all know as U.S. men's national team fans that we are way better and, and have more capability than what we saw today. I said earlier we could have scored five to six goals, and I, this is the golden generation of talent. Bolivia is not a very good team. We have to be able to capitalize and uh, you know, essentially put our, our foot on the neck of these other teams and just take advantage, especially when the talent disparity is this wide. Because we're going to have to be dogs and 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 really uh, give it our all and, and have to ca have to capitalize on these opportunities when we play these better teams like the Brazils, like the Colombias, like the Uruguays, like the Argentinas. We're going to have to do that, or we're going to get smoked. So, I mean, it's it's. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's the, it, it wasn't ideal. I thought this could have been a trap game because this is the game that I thought the U S men's national team might be sleepwalking through like essentially, uh, you know, thinking that they were just going to walk by and that they were just going to smoke Bolivia without even trying uh, that at least they did try better. They did play better than what I originally thought could happen. I, you know, trap games are real, you know, teams overlook other teams and they don't play very well against them and it can be a dangerous game to play, but they didn't do that necessarily in this game. The next team that they play is Panama. Now, Panama is definitely a little bit better team than Bolivia. Bolivia, most of their national team players are all playing in the Bolivian League, which is probably one of the worst leagues there is in the world, uh, Division One, right? It's probably the worst Division One soccer league in South America. So Panama is going to be a little bit of a different challenge. We can't really play like this against Panama because Panama is one of the teams that can hit, can you know, punch you in the mouth if you don't capitalize and step on their neck early on. So we're going to have to capitalize on Panama. We're going to have to play a more complete game. We got to, you know, finish our chances. Uh, this is a team that we can beat three or four nil or three four one, uh, but we're going to have to play a better all around game. And I, I, maybe it's just ramping up. Like I said, it's the first game that we played in this competition. It's the first. It's opener for the Copa America, so it's not time to panic. I think we're going to advance to our group. We'll be interested to see what happens when we play Panama. But if we play like we play today against like a team like Uruguay, ooh, not going to be pretty. Not going to be pretty. And 
but like I said, it was an average performance. Greg Berhalter is not getting any criticism today, but he's not off scot free yet, right? Obviously, might have seen the meme I posted about if you would rather the U.S. men's national team get grouped and fire Berhalter, or if you would rather win the group and save Berhalter's job. I was obviously kidding. I don't want Berhalter. Uh, uh, I don't want the U.S. men's national team to get grouped because I love this team. It was just a joke, but you know, I I, I do think that. That's probably the only way he would get fired is if we are grouped. So, you know, you just kind of have to wait which one means more to you. But I, I don't actually want us to lose. I, I want us to win and try to advance as far as we can. I just have my reservations about what this team's capabilities are and know what their limitations are. And I'm not feeling very good under the helm of Greg Berhalter. So we'll see what happens. They play Panama on Thursday. Uh, it, you know, this is an average opening game. Let me know in the comments section how you feel after the U.S. men's national team's first match in Copa America against Bolivia. Is it what you expected? Are you disappointed? How do you feel going forward in this tournament? And until next time, I will see you all soon.